In the late 1950s, Columbia Pictures began the search for the perfect cast to bring the beloved beach novel Gidget to life. The film studio aimed to capture the carefree spirit of the story, set against the backdrop of Southern California's surf culture. For the title role of Gidget, a young Sandra Dee was ultimately chosen aider at the time. Dee was an up-and-coming actress, having recently appeared in films like Imitation of Life and The Reluctant Debutante. The film's producers saw her as the ideal candidate to portray the teenage girl who finds herself falling in love with surfing and the beach lifestyle. Dee's girl-next-door charm and innocent demeanor helped her secure the part, and she would go on to become synonymous with the character. James Darren was cast as Moondoggy, Gidget's love interest. Darren, a singer and actor, had previously appeared in a few small roles, but had not yet achieved significant fame. Producers were drawn to his good looks and charisma, believing he would make a perfect match for Dee on screen. The chemistry between the two actors was evident from their first scenes together, and their romantic tension became a central focus of the film. Cliff Robertson, an experienced actor with a number of film and television credits to his name, was cast as the big kahuna, the mysterious and experienced surfer who takes Gidget under his wing. His rugged charm and confident screen presence made him a natural fit for the role. The supporting cast was rounded out by a number of familiar faces, including Arthur O'Connell as Gidget's father and Thelma Ritter as a family friend. Both actors brought warmth and humor to their roles, providing a strong foundation for the film's central relationships. Throughout the casting process, the film's producers and director focused on finding actors who could embody the spirit of the story and bring the characters to life in a way that felt authentic and engaging. The resulting cast would go on to captivate audiences and help establish Gidget as a beloved classic of American cinema. The director of Gidget, Paul Wenkos, approached the story with a fresh and lighthearted style. He was influenced by the emerging youth culture of the late 1950s and aimed to capture the free-spirited nature of the beach lifestyle. Wenkos's vision was to create a film that was both relatable and aspirational for the young audience. Wenkos's directing style was characterized by his ability to bring out natural and authentic performances from his actors. He worked closely with the cast, including Sandra Dee who played the lead role of Gidget, to ensure that their portrayals were believable and relatable. Wenkos's collaborative approach also extended to the crew, where he fostered a positive and creative working environment. One of Wenkos's key creative influences was the French New Wave movement, which was known for its innovative storytelling techniques and visual style. Wenkos incorporated some of these elements into Gidget, such as the use of handheld cameras and location shooting, to give the film a more documentary-like feel. Wenkos's vision for Gidget was to create a film that was not only entertaining, but also reflected the changing times and the values of the younger generation. He succeeded in bringing to life a story that resonated with audiences and helped to define the beach party genre of the 1960s. Gidget is a classic 1959 movie that tells the story of a young girl who discovers the world of surfing. The film features many unforgettable characters, including the lovable Gidget, played by Sandra Dee. Out of all the roles in this movie, Gidget is definitely our favorite. She's funny, adventurous, and always up for a challenge. The film also features some amazing classic Hollywood actors, including James Darren and Cliff Robertson. Our personal favorite has to be Cliff Robertson, who plays the cool and charming surfing instructor, Moondoggy. But there's so much more to this movie than just great characters and actors. In this video, we'll be sharing some fascinating facts about Gidget that will shock, surprise, and maybe even bring a tear to your eye. From the true story behind the movie to the lasting impact it had on pop culture, you won't want to miss a minute. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to learn all about this classic movie. And after you've watched, we'd love to hear your stories and memories related to Gidget in the comments below. What's your most cherished memory of this beloved film? The 1959 movie Gidget, a delightful surfing comedy, was filmed primarily in California. The production team chose several locations to capture the film's authentic beach culture and vibe. Malibu Surfrider Beach was a significant location, showcasing the area's picturesque cliffs and sandy beaches. Set design played a crucial role in creating the perfect atmosphere for the story. The production team built a beachfront house for Gidget, which was situated on a cliff overlooking the ocean. This set was designed to reflect the laid-back, fun-loving spirit of the main character and her love for surfing. Another essential location was the fictional College of the Pacific, 
which was filmed at the University of California, Los Angeles. The campus provided a suitable backdrop for the college scenes, highlighting the contrast between Gidget's academic pursuits and her passion for surfing. Logistical challenges during filming included managing the crowds of people who frequently visited Malibu's beaches. To ensure a smooth production, the crew had to work around beachgoers and surfers. Additionally, filming in the ocean presented its own set of difficulties, such as dealing with changing tides and unpredictable weather conditions. As for innovative techniques, Gidget was one of the first films to utilize the then new 35mm Cinemascope format. This widescreen process allowed for a more immersive viewing experience, capturing the expansive ocean vistas and beach landscapes in a visually striking way. The film's use of this technology helped to solidify its status as a classic representation of 1950s beach culture. The 1959 movie Gidget has received mixed reviews over the years. Some viewers found it disturbing, questioning the wisdom of allowing a naive teenage daughter to spend time with a group of hormonal young men, particularly the character Kahuna. The film's focus on Gidget's romantic pursuits and surfing adventures has been criticized for its lack of depth and substance. The film's portrayal of women has also been a subject of criticism. The main character, Gidget, is a typical 1950s woman, concerned with finding the right man and looking good in the right clothes. Her lack of attraction to men, except for the right one, has been seen as a reflection of the limited roles and expectations for women during that time. Additionally, the film's failure to address important social and political issues of the time, such as Jim Crow laws in the South, the Plessy Ferguson decision, and American foreign policy post World War II, has been noted. Instead, the film focuses on trivial concerns, such as learning how to surf and attending loas. Despite these criticisms, the film has its defenders. Some viewers appreciate it for its innocence and pure escapism. The film's light-hearted and carefree tone has been seen as a refreshing contrast to the weightier issues and problems of the real world. Furthermore, the film star, Sandra Dee, has been praised for her talent. Despite being typecast in shallow and superficial roles, Dee demonstrated her acting abilities in films such as Imitation of Life and A Summer Place. In conclusion, Gidget is a film that has been both criticized and praised. While some view it as a disturbing and superficial portrayal of women and society, others appreciate it for its innocence and escapism. Regardless of one's opinion, the film remains a reflection of the values and attitudes of the 1950s and a testament to the talent of its star, Sandra Dee. The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a meticulous process that involves blending music with the narrative and emotional tone of the movie. For the 1959 movie Gidget, the composers and musicians worked diligently to create a soundtrack that would complement the story of a young girl's fascination with surfing. Gidget's soundtrack featured popular songs of the time, including The Rest of the World, Let's Go Trippin', and Moonlight Surfing. These songs, performed by artists like The Sandals and The Chantays, helped to establish the film's laid-back, carefree atmosphere. The instrumental score, composed by Lawrence Rosenthal, further enhanced the movie's tone, providing a gentle backdrop for the character's adventures. Rosenthal's score was designed to complement the narrative, highlighting key moments and emotions in the story. For instance, the music swells during romantic scenes, creating a sense of warmth and intimacy. When Gidget is out on the water, the score features lively, upbeat melodies that capture the thrill of surfing. In creating the soundtrack, Rosenthal and the other musicians drew inspiration from the film's setting and themes. The result is a collection of music that not only complements the narrative, but also stands on its own as a memorable soundtrack. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of Gidget's score and soundtrack approach their work with care and attention to detail. By blending popular songs with an original score, they were able to create a soundtrack that enhances the movie's narrative and emotional tone, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. James Darren, initially deemed unsuitable for the Moondoggy role in Gidget due to his limited singing abilities, secured the part after recording a successful single. Despite his lack of surfing skills and weak swimming, he gained immense popularity and reprised the role in the sequels. The real-life Gidget, Kathy Connor, gained recognition as one of Surfer Magazine's most influential surfers. In the movie, four actors, including James Darren, Cliff Robertson, Tom Laughlin, and Doug McClure, appeared bare-chested. Robertson's numerous shirtless scenes displayed his sun-bronzed, sweaty physique, becoming the film's best beefcake moments. However, Darren had to undergo a full-body waxing 
which seemed unnatural for his personality. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1959 movie Gidget is when Francie Lawrence, played by Sandra Dee, first meets Moondog, portrayed by Cliff Robertson, at the beach. The direction by Paul Winkos is noteworthy, as he skillfully captures the contrast between the innocent and inexperienced Francie and the laid-back, carefree surfers. The performance by Sandra D is exceptional. She beautifully portrays Francie's curiosity and fascination with the surfer culture, which resonates with the audience. Cliff Robertson's portrayal of Moondog, the enigmatic and charming surfer, also leaves a lasting impression. The cinematography by Stanley P. Cortez is stunning. The camera work captures the vastness and beauty of the beach, emphasizing Francie's smallness in this new world she's discovered. The use of wide shots and natural lighting further accentuates the carefree and relaxed atmosphere of the beach. This scene has a significant impact on the audience as it sets the stage for the rest of the movie. It introduces the main characters and the central conflict, Francie's desire to fit in with the surfers and her struggle to maintain her individuality. Unfortunately, there are no direct commentaries from the filmmakers or actors regarding this specific scene. However, Sandra D, in an interview, mentioned her experience working on Gidget, stating, It was a fun movie to make, and I love playing Gidget. It was a role that allowed me to be myself, and I think that's why it resonated with so many people. This scene, along with the rest of the movie, has left an indelible mark on popular culture. It introduced the world to the character of Gidget, which has since been adapted into various forms of media, including television shows and books. The movie also played a significant role in popularizing surfing and the beach culture in the United States. Cliff Robertson, known for his surfing skills in his hometown of Ajala, California, showcased his abilities in the movie Gidget. However, co-star James Darren, who played Mundagi, faced challenges during the surfing scenes. Initially not selected for the role due to his weak singing skills, Darren recorded a single with Colpix Records, which led to his casting. Despite his inability to surf, Darren's portrayal of Mundagi made him a teen idol, and he reprised the role in later Gidget films. In one scene, set in the beach house, an instrumental version of Frank Sinatra's From Here to Eternity plays in the background, though it's never officially credited. The film's soundtrack subtly enhances the atmosphere, contributing to Gidget's memorable beach culture setting. The 1959 movie Gidget brought a fresh perspective to American pop culture, endearing itself to audiences with its light-hearted story of a young girl's fascination with surfing. The film's protagonist, Gidget, played by Sandra Dee, became an iconic representation of the youthful spirit of the time, inspiring a new wave of female surfers and contributing to the growing popularity of surfing culture in the United States. Gidget resonated with audiences by offering a relatable portrayal of a teenager navigating the challenges of adolescence, relationships, and self-discovery. The film's themes of friendship, love, and personal growth struck a chord with moviegoers, leading to a successful box office performance and a devoted fan base. Moreover, Gidget influenced pop culture by popularizing the concept of girl midget, a term coined in the movie to describe a female surfer. This term, and the character of Gidget herself, helped to challenge gender norms and empower young women to participate in what was then considered a predominantly male pastime. The film also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes such as the changing role of women in society. Gidget's determination to pursue her passion for surfing, despite initial resistance from her friends and family, served as a powerful example of female independence and self-reliance. In summary, Gidget left an indelible mark on American pop culture, inspiring a new generation of female surfers, challenging gender norms, and contributing to important social discussions. Its enduring legacy continues to captivate audiences and remains an important cultural touchstone in the world of surfing and beyond. Joby Baker, a lean and friendly actor, gained recognition in the late 1950s for his role in Gidget and Elvis Presley movies. His career had a brief resurgence in the late 1960s with the sitcom. Kathy Conner, the inspiration behind Gidget, was honored with a place in the Huntington Beach Surfing Walk of Fame. The movie's popularity led to two sequels and a television series featuring a young Sally Field. The franchise continued to grow, with different actresses taking on the lead role in each subsequent iteration. Gidget, a 1959 movie, received positive reviews from critics and had a favorable audience reaction. The film's light-hearted and charming portrayal of the coming-of-age story of a young girl, played by Sandra Dee, was widely appreciated. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times praised the film, 
highlighting Dee's performance as refreshingly natural and the overall production as bright and breezy. The film's ability to appeal to both teenagers and adults was also noted, with Crowther stating that Gidget has a nice, clean, wholesome flavor that should go down easily with the youngsters while amusing their elders. The film was also a commercial success, grossing over $5 million at the box office, which was a significant amount for the time. This success led to a TV series and several sequels, solidifying Gidget's place in popular culture. In terms of awards, Gidget did not receive any major accolades, but it was nominated for a Laurel Award for Top Female New Personality, which Sandra Dee won. This award was a testament to Dee's breakout performance and her ability to carry the film as its lead. The positive critical reception and commercial success of Gidget were significant for those involved in the film. For Sandra Dee, the film marked her breakout role and established her as a leading actress in Hollywood. The film's success also solidified the careers of producer Ross Hunter and director Paul Wenkos, who went on to have successful careers in the industry. Overall, the critical reception and awards received by Gidget were a reflection of the film's charm, wit, and relatability. The film's ability to appeal to a wide audience and its impact on popular culture have made it a beloved classic that continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. In the 1959 movie Gidget, the beach party band, The Four Preps, performs, known for their hit song about Catalina Island. Mickey Munoz, an early surfing pioneer, stood in for Sandra Dee in the surf scenes, wearing a blonde wig and bikini. Gidget, the film's protagonist, drives a stylish white 1955 Ford Sunliner convertible, which originally sold for around $2,200, but was later available for less than $1,000 after four years. In June 2019, a similar model was sold on eBay for 2536 bids. In the making of the 1959 movie Gidget, there were many memorable moments that brought the cast and crew closer together. One such instance was when Sandra Dee, who played the titular character, had a hard time learning to surf for her role. To help her out, the surfers cast as extras taught her how to balance and ride the waves. Dee's determination and their patience created a bond between the cast members, which was evident in the film's lighthearted and friendly atmosphere. Another anecdote involves James Darren, who played the love interest Moondoggy, Darren, a talented singer, would often entertain the cast and crew by performing impromptu concerts on set. His performances were a welcome break from the long hours of filming and brought a sense of camaraderie among the team. Behind the scenes, the director, Paul Wenkos, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure each scene was authentic and engaging. Wenkos even had the production design team recreate the iconic Malibu surfing culture of the time which was still relatively unknown to the general public. This dedication to accuracy helped make Gidget a groundbreaking film and introduce the world to the laid-back, sun-soaked lifestyle of Southern California. Despite the challenges of filming on location and learning new skills, the cast and crew of Gidget remained enthusiastic and committed to creating a memorable movie. Their sheer experiences and the friendships forged during production have left an indelible mark on the film's legacy making Gidget not just a classic movie, but also a testament to the power of collaboration and determination. In 1959, the production of Gidget featured some interesting facts. The original plan was to cast Elvis Presley as the leading male, but the studio declined due to his high salary at the time. The iconic surfboard that Gidget uses in the movie cost her 25, which is equivalent to approximately 250 today. After Sandra Dee's passing in 2005, some of her co-stars and friends appeared on Larry King Live to pay tribute to her. James Darren, her Gidget co-star, revealed that he had a crush on her during filming but couldn't get close to her because her mother was always present. The 1959 movie Gidget holds a significant place in film history as one of the first films to explore the youth culture and surfing scene of Southern California. Its lighthearted and relatable portrayal of teenage life contributed to the popularization of the beach party genre in the 1960s. Gidget's impact on future filmmaking can be seen in the numerous spin-offs, remakes, and adaptations it inspired, such as the TV series Gidget and the film Gidget Gets Married. The character of Gidget herself, played by Sandra Dee, became an iconic representation of teenage innocence and curiosity. Moreover, Gidget paved the way for strong female leads in films, showcasing a young woman who is intelligent, adventurous, and capable of holding her own in a male-dominated world. This theme would be further explored in subsequent films, 
and TV shows reflecting changing societal attitudes towards gender roles. In addition, Gidget's depiction of the Southern California surf culture helped to popularize the sport and lifestyle worldwide. The film's success led to a surge in interest in surfing, leading to the growth of the surf industry and the creation of new beach-themed films and music. Overall, Gidget's lasting legacy and influence can be seen in its contributions to the beach party genre, its impact on future filmmaking and television, its representation of female empowerment, and its role in popularizing surf culture. The 1959 movie Gidget is based on the real-life adventures of Kathy Conner Zuckerman and her experiences in the surf culture of Malibu during the 1950s. Kathy, still petite and attractive, currently resides in Pacific Palisades with her husband. The character of Moondoggy, who also appeared in the sequels Gidget Goes Hawaiian and Gidget Goes to Rome, is based on a real-life artist living in California. James Darren is the only actor to appear in all three Gidget films, playing the same character each time. Joby Baker also appeared in all three movies, but as different characters. Cliff Robertson's portrayal of the Big Kahuna was based on Terry Tubistake Tracy, who embodied the rebellious surf subculture that emerged in California in the late 1950s. In Gidget, Kathy's father, played by Arthur O'Connell, represents the older generation's view of the emerging surf culture. He is initially dismissive of the surfers and their lifestyle, but eventually comes to understand and appreciate it. The film also explores the theme of female empowerment as Gidget learns to hold her own in the male-dominated world of surfing. The 1959 movie Gidget had a few notable connections to other productions. The Gidget House, with its distinctive brick exterior and raised location, is said to have inspired the design of the Bewitched House. In fact, the Bewitched House was constructed four years later, in 1963, on an extension of Columbia Studios known as Columbia Ranch, adjacent to the Hazel House. In one scene, Gidget's mother asked her father if he was expecting Kim Novak, referencing the actress's appearance in the film Picnic. This connection is strengthened by the fact that Arthur O'Connell, who plays Gidget's father, had acted alongside Kim Novak in Picnic, while Cliff Robertson, who plays the Big Kahuna, was also in the film as Kim Novak's boyfriend. Another interesting detail is that Kathy Conner, the real-life inspiration for Gidget, initially traded peanut butter sandwiches she made at home for the use of surfboards. However, in the movie, Gidget brings the surfers hamburgers instead. This change showcases the film's creative liberties while still maintaining the spirit of the original story. In the 1959 movie Gidget, a shocking fact is that the main character's name, Gidget, is a combination of girl and midget, a term that is now considered derogatory and offensive. The film's producers use this name to describe the protagonist's petite stature and youthful spirit. It's a sad reminder of the insensitive language that was once accepted in Hollywood. The movie is based on the novel Gidget, The Little Girl with Big Ideas by Frederick Conner, who was inspired by his daughter Kathy's experiences as one of the first female surfers in Malibu. Kathy, also known as Gidget, became a symbol of female empowerment and independence in a male-dominated sport. However, the use of the term midget in the film's title is a stark contrast to the progressive message of the story. Despite the problematic title, Gidget is a coming-of-age story that follows a young girl's journey of self-discovery and acceptance. The film explores themes of identity, love, and friendship, and it features a strong female lead who challenges gender norms. Gidget's passion for surfing and her refusal to conform to societal expectations make her a relatable and inspiring character for audiences of all ages. In conclusion, while the use of the term midget in the title of Gidget is troubling, the film's positive message and empowering portrayal of female characters make it a classic in the world of coming-of-age stories. It's a reminder of the progress that has been made in terms of gender equality and language sensitivity, as well as the work that still needs to be done. Did Gidget, the 1959 classic, leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories and memories about this groundbreaking film. How did it affect you personally or shape your view of cinema? Perhaps you were inspired by the film's fresh take on female surfers, or maybe you simply enjoyed the lighthearted romance and coming-of-age tale. Whatever your connection to Gidget, we'd love to hear from you. So, share your thoughts and memories in the comments below. Let's engage in a lively discussion about this beloved film, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's celebrate the enduring legacy of Gidget and its impact on our lives.